Have you ever seen three-dimensional chalk drawings? If you haven't seen them before, take some time and just look you know, look on, on Google Images or something. There's these incredible works of art where these very talented artists make these three-dimensional drawings in the street using chalk. The one I'm showing you right now is of Lego soldiers, and they really do look like they're 3D. But the thing is that they only really work if you, if you look at the drawing from exactly the right perspective, if you look at it from the right angle. As an example, that same uh, drawing of, of the Lego soldiers, here's what it looks like uh, from the wrong perspective. It's, it's distorted and it doesn't really look anything like what it needs to. In today's Dining Room Devo, Paul finishes his telling of the confrontation he had with Peter. And he gives us a perspective on Christ's sacrifice that I think we would all do well to share. But we're reading Galatians 2, verses 19 through 21. For through the law, I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God, for if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. He uses this phrase. It's incredibly powerful. He says, I have been crucified with Christ. And that's a powerful analogy. In part because nobody who had ever seen crucifixion would ever want to be associated with crucifixion. But Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. The crucifixion had been around for centuries before Paul wrote this. And the Romans didn't invent crucifixion, but they did perfect it. The crucifixion was a horrible way to die, and it was designed to be as excruciating as possible. In crucifixion, the, the crucified person's median nerves are crushed by the nails in the hands. And they weren't, didn't really crucify you in the hands. They crucified you in the wrist, and it would crush the central nerve that's a part of of your hand. And so every moment is torture. Every time you move, you would feel that, that nail rubbing against the nerve. And in your feet, the, the person's full weight would be upon the nails that were driven through the metatarsal bones in the feet. And that nail, just as it, it would crush the median nerve in the hand, the, the, the nail in the foot would have pierced several of the major nerves in the foot. But the worst aspect of crucifixion is not the nails through the hands and the feet. Instead, it's, it's the usual manner of death, which was, believe it or not, suffocation. Because the position of the person's body on the cross would make breathing very difficult. You could inhale. Inhaling was not a problem. But the problem is that as you would hang there, eventually your diaphragm muscles would become partially paralyzed making exhaling, making getting rid of the air that was inside of your lungs very difficult. And the only way that you would be able to exhale would, by, would be by pushing yourselves up. In other words, strength, straightening your legs, putting all of your weight on those nails through your feet. That's the only way you'd be able to exhale. And so every single breath the crucified person were to take would involve putting your body weight on those nails. And, and this kind of torture of pushing and, and lifting and exhaling, putting that weight on those nerves, that, that would last for days. And the point here I'm making is that crucifixion is a very slow process. It wasn't something that typically only lasted a couple of hours. It could last for several days or even weeks. To say that we've been crucified with Christ is not simply a statement that our old self has died. Now, we are to regard ourselves as dead to our old way of living, certainly. But in reality, Paul uses this analogy that I have been crucified with Christ. Not I was crucified, but I have been. In other words, we're crucified. Our old sinful nature still hangs on, much as a crucified victim continues to hang on for quite a while. So when the temptation or sinful thoughts invade, we must remind that crucified self on the cross that, that he's dead to us. We've rejected him. 
The problem is that when it comes to our sinful nature that's been crucified with Christ is that we often take that crucified man down because we want to indulge in the sin a little bit longer and we nurture him back to health a little bit before we finally decide that we're done with him again and we, we crucify him all over again. And here, this, this episode in Antioch, the problem is that Peter had fallen into sin because he allowed himself to be pulled into that pre-Christian way of looking at things where we allow racial division and, and we try to trust in our own actions. He, even for a moment, took the crucified Peter down from the cross and indulged his sinful nature. See, that's the problem is that even though we're crucified with Christ, we never really let that old nature die, do we? We take it down and play with it a little bit longer. But Paul says here in Galatians 2 that he is dead to his old ways, which includes trusting in his own works. And that he's also done with the sorts of divisions and the social hierarchies that we can tend to develop, which in the case of the church at Antioch had resulted in Jews and Gentile believers not associating with each other. Paul describes this in Philippians 3, we, last time we looked at verses 4 to 6. Today we're going to look at Philippians 3, 7 through 9, where Paul says, But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. Paul says in this passage that, that the old ways, that trying to prove that I'm better than others, trying to be good enough, he says they're trash, they're rubbish. I've left them behind. He essentially says, if it's not from Jesus, I don't want it in me. But back to Galatians 2, what Paul says in verse 20 is that everything that I do in this flesh, I'm crucified with Christ, but everything that I do in the flesh now, I'm going to do by faith in Jesus Christ. Why? Because it says, Jesus loved me and gave himself up for me. Now, when Paul says he was crucified with Christ, both Paul and his audience know that he hasn't actually been crucified. Paul wasn't crucified. That's not how he died. But Christ was crucified. He gave himself up. Christ allowed himself to be spat upon, to be mocked, to be wrongly convicted, to be beaten, and to be crucified, to go through that torturous manner of death for us because of his love for us. That choice, Christ's choice to allow himself to be crucified brought us grace. And so Paul says to go back to legalism, to go back to trusting in ourselves, in essence would be to, to set aside God's grace, to reject it, to despise God's grace. If we trust in ourselves, we have thrown away what Jesus did at the cross. Going back to that old way is an insult to God. And it's pointless because if you could purchase salvation through slavery to the law, then Christ's crucifixion just amounts to a cosmic waste. We must choose Paul's attitude and perspective that we have been crucified with Christ, that that old us we've put on the cross and, and it's, it's in the process of dying and we want nothing to do with it. Our right to our own desires, our old way of thinking, our own prejudices and selfish pride, we've nailed them to the cross. So leave them there. Don't take them down. Don't take them down for a moment. Instead, seek Jesus Christ and seek him alone. Be strengthened in the faith. Let nothing deter you. So today, when you feel temptation come knocking on your door, when, when sinful thoughts are entering your mind, teach yourself to repeat Paul's words over and over again. I have been crucified with Christ. Thank you for watching Dining Room Devos. May uh, God bless you. Feel free to leave a comment, like the video, share it with somebody else. Visit us at our website, newparisfirst.com, or if you're looking for a place to worship this Sunday, we would love to see you at the First Brethren Church of New Paris. May God bless you.